Sunday tea, you guys, tonight. We have Tola D here tonight. We're going to talk about the Africa Day. I want you guys to join me tonight. It's been a long, crazy week, you guys. But we're here tonight to have a community meeting. We want to join the Caribbean and the African community. Come on in tonight, you guys. I'm going to have some tea and warm myself up a little. Hi, guys, whoever is out there. Hello, how you do? Hi, Cynthia. We want to thank Cynthia for my makeup tonight, you guys. She light up the place. She made me look fantastic. Even with the hairline looking a little thin, I still rocking it. That's what we're talking about. I'm telling you, black woman, we can put anything together and make it work. Ain't that the truth? Yes, we can. Cynthia. Come on in, I have my guest joining me tonight. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Um, welcome to Sunday Tea tonight. Yes. I love your hair, by the way. Thank you. I'm going to let you introduce yourself to the audience and tell them who you are and what we're here to discuss. Uh, I'm Tola D. Um, my real name is Matola Dawadu, and I am the Assistant Artistic Director from uh, Africa Day. So I'm here to talk about the upcoming film festival that we were having. It's our first uh, film festival that we're having, although we've had a film festival before, but um, this is going to be the first installment of the annual film festival that we're going to be having. Fantastic. Yes. So what I wanted to know is, I want to see if we can incorporate all the nap not just, it says African, but I'm just wondering if we can incorporate all the Caribbeans, all the Africans, just people, community to get urban. Let's say urban community, mm -hmm. right? And let we want to tell some of the, um, the Caribbean, because a lot of Caribbean kind of feels that they're separate from yes. the African thing. That so we need so to touch true. on that, right? Yes, we so need we to definitely talk about that. Yes, we need, I'm going to let you start with that, 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 that segregation that is, or that separation that, that we go through. That is something that has been, you know, this is a, a topic that has been going on way before my time. And mine. And yours. And, I adore. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's been going on for such a long time. And will it ever get fixed? I don't know. You know, I don't know. We can only try. But I can tell you this as a little girl, I used to go to CareFest all the time. So did I. I used to bring my little my son. Well, he's a big son yes. now, but he used to be really tiny. And I used to bring him. As a matter of fact, I remember him taking his chain off and giving it away to somebody <laughs> dumb little yes. boy, I'm telling you. But yeah, we used to all go there. But finish the conversation, sweetheart. Well, you know, when I was a kid and we used to go to CareFest, it was no big deal, like these little African girls going to CareFest. We just enjoyed it because we really didn't see the difference. And it was family. It was, and it family, was family time. Yes. Everybody brought their babies. They had yes. their babies well-dressed. Yes. You know, the husband or the boyfriend or whatever he was, he was well dressed. Yes. They had a picnic basket and it yeah. was a community. It was a community. Yeah, you brought your lunch, you ate, you you enjoyed the music, everybody talked, whether you were from Africa, whether you were from the Caribbean, like you all mixed and mingled because a lot of that generation came to Canada at the same, same time. time. So they knew each other. So so can you elaborate what you think that has created this segregation between the same race. Because it is a segregation, and it is between the same race. And, and, and worst of all, what I'm seeing today, I, I mean, Ugh. the worst thing I'm seeing is black female women. Oh, don't even get me started. I have to. I have to get started on that. I have to address it. Yeah. We seem you don't want to elevate each other. No, no, it's not. And, it's, yeah. So I, I want you to tap on some of those topics one at a time, right? So let's talk about the segregation between okay. the African and the Caribbean community. Okay, well, I would say there's a number of things. It's so deep. You know, it is so, so deep. And I think people forget that it all starts with colonialism. You know, that, that divide, it, that conquer and divide, you absolutely. know, from slavery. This is how you rule your slaves. You divide them. You make them weak so that they can't come together. You've got the lighter skinned people working in the house and you know and then you've got like the field hand who's a black man <laughs> 
who's working for the white man to keep the white man's slaves, you know, in line. But it's created such a well, segregation and that's, between us. It has, but it's become hurtful. It's becoming painful. And I know that a lot of people don't want to talk about it, mm -hmm. but if we don't talk about it, we can't change it. Well, this is something that has to be you know, started individually because it's so deep rooted. This is something that is so it's deep far. rooted. It's and like, it's, it goes so far back and like the wounds are just like, we're just marching in those wounds and we have not stitched them up and brought them together. Today's 2017 and I feel that the wounds are, they're opening bigger. Oh yeah. They, okay. Like they're just exploding. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if it's the time. I don't know if it's the economy. I don't know if people are going through something that is just, I don't know that we can't see. But we're just getting further and further from humans. Like, well, that's a very good point. That is a very good point. We don't have social skills. We, you know, because we don't have social skills because now everything is at our fingertips. You know, just think about it before. When you wanted to talk to somebody, you called them on the landline or you went to their house. Now everything is like, we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook and everybody puts their life up on there. Whether they're living that life or not, right? It's always about, let me show the next person what I'm doing. Do you find that people don't come to you face to face anymore and give you a warm hug? Yes. Or do you find that somebody doesn't look at you and say, how was your day? Yes. Do you find that when you when you look at these things, you see more of somebody dying on the street, and there's a an iPhone <laughs> sitting up there saying, "Oh my God, look what's happening!" Yes. Oh my God, look. Yeah. What, so we're about we're we're becoming something of. We don't have that social skill anymore, and it's because of social media. It's because of technology. It's because of all of these things that we've led into our life. That Is it because we, we're bored. I think we've made this, if we don't have it, then we're like, well, we have no life for reward. But what did people do before? They lived. They lived. It's true. We live without We self. lived. We live without life. We, we, you know? And so, and that's like, and that's just one aspect. And that doesn't even, you know, get into the community aspect of it. Now we're just talking about humanity as a whole, which we've completely lost touch with. With reality. We have we, we've no totally, yeah. reality. There's, There's no absolutely reality. no reality. Yeah. So how, what can we do? What can we do to uplift <laughs> us as black women? Not just black women, but how can we lift us up as women? How can we do that? We have to have, uh, to start with, it, you know, of course I don't have all the answers. Nobody, Nobody has, has, all, Nobody the has answer, all the answers. But if we don't discuss but, it and talk about um, it, we, there's no changes, right? But what can we do to uplift, uplift each other instead of tearing each other down? What can we do? I think there's so much, um, how do you say it? We've got, there's so much ego. There's so much internal racism. You know, there's so much of that. And women are the worst. You see, men can be friends and be happy for one another when they've done something good. Or when they've done something that they're like, wow, you did that? Like, I'm so happy for you, bro. But women are really nasty. They can be really, really nasty. And they don't want you to do anything that they feel is better than them. So they'll try to sabotage you. They'll try to like tear you down, bring you down and just do the nastiest things for you to you because their ego gets involved. And that hurts our community. And that's why we can never come together. Look, I always say this. When you go to Chinatown, mm -hmm. if you can have a Chinese store or restaurant in the middle, a Korean on the left, a Japanese on the right, and then a Filipino one, you know, kicking around. If they can do it, why can't we? Now they, and they hate each other. But we keep, we keep saying that. We, we keep, keep saying we that. We keep saying that we are, we are crabs in a barrel. We say that it's from slavery. We say, we have so much excuses, excuses. why we behave the way we do. I, I agree, and I've had this conversation many, many times to the point where sometimes this conversation can be just like the bane of your existence, really. Because this is something that our community talks about over and over and over again. But yet when push comes to shove, we don't do anything about it. So 
for instance, when I go out, you know, I'm always, I'm always very careful about my, my phone. Am I sitting on my phone, looking at my phone, or am I aware of my surroundings? I talk to people all the time. I try to make it a point to talk to five people a day when I'm out in public. Just even if I'm at the theater and you're sitting next to me, you know, make conversation because that's just what you do. In our community, we need to start doing that. So, um, you know, we when we've had uh, events at Africa Day, we don't care where you come from. We've had people come from Brazil. <laughs> we've had people come from France. We've had people come from Jamaica. We've had people come from all over. It doesn't matter. We all have one common interest. Which is fine. I think we all know that the world is made up of differences. Different yeah. people, different shape, different mm -hmm. size, mm -hmm. different opinions. What I'm talking about is women pulling down each other. There's no, it's not a good thing. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good, you know? And I, I don't think that one person can, can change right. the community, no matter how positive that one person is. I think it needs, I think it needs a hand. I think all of us need a hand to work together to make it better. Yeah. We're not gonna change anything with one individual. No, but it needs to start. And then hopefully that person can talk to the next individual. And then that, you know what I mean? I mean, just from people watching this conversation, it'll make them think about it. How are they within the community? Other women. Well, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that most women, I'm hoping that most women, not just black women, Caucasian women, East Indian women, but I'm hoping that they will look and they will try to enhance themselves. Like they're trying to help each other. Do you know what I mean? It's so much better to help <laughs> each other than to tear each other down. Like, but you have to remember that this is the thing we always do. You have to remember not everybody's like-minded. And it's very hard to work with people that are not like-minded. I and mean, you have to try to convert them. That's really sad to say, but you have to try to convert them to have that the same thinking. I understand what you're saying. I think you know most women in our community understand what you're saying. Um, how you fix it again? It's like it's, that is a hard, hard. Or is it even possible to fix it? It's possible, but look how many years we've been at it. <laughs> because we don't just have a problem, like I said, with the women in the community. We have a problem with ourselves in the community. That's what it's. And I that find, we have to address that. that. I find there's a lot of self hatred. There's so there's, much self hatred. I find there's so much. Do I have any questions out there, you guys? No questions so far. Just a few joiners of people popping in and popping out. So far, four we have live right now. Okay. Um, I just I find that there's a lot of self hatred, and I think when you hate yourself so much you can't find no no there's no peace of happiness there's no you can't you, you can't shine of course not of course not so how can how can i mean i know you're not a shrink and neither am i yeah but what can we do to we can't change the way somebody feels inside look if somebody is you know just take this as an example if somebody is nasty to you and you know that they're trying to tear you down and you know that when you see them, don't just jokes, <laughs> you know? Smile. <laughs> Smile in their face and kill them with kindness. And you know, sometimes, a lot of the times, that works like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be so nasty. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe there's no reason for me to be jealous that this person is doing this. And that, that's another big issue that we have is like, you know, the ego and the jealousy. And jealousy is another, that's a totally different thing. Yes. That's totally where the disease comes in. It's yes, absolutely that's right. insane. But what I'm, what I'm worried about is that we get so angry with each other that we actually lose the focus of the big picture. Of course we do. Because it's, yeah. I think it's better to work together as a unit than separate it, right? Because, I mean, think about it. If you have a brick this big, are you going to be able to carry the brick by yourself? Right. Or do you have to break it down into pieces <laughs> and have different people help you? Well, this is the thing, you know, and I've gone to lots of events, you know, people always say to me when they ask me my name and when they know my real name, like, oh, I thought you were from Jamaica. I thought you were, what does, what does a Jamaican person look like? Like, you, what does a person from Trinidad look like? Like, what, do, you know what I mean? So we have these, we have these stereotypes. And when I say, when I start talking about Africa or when I, you know, start talking about different things uh, related to the community, I hear a lot of, well, we're not really the same. Or, yeah, I know a little bit, but we, we really don't do the same thing. Why do we think we're not the same? Good question. Why do we think that 
because I was born in Trinidad, you were born in Africa, um, another person was born in Jamaica, mm -hmm. Barbados. Why do we not know that we're originated from the same? Why do we not know that we're the same? We know, we know. We just, for whatever reason, we just don't want to admit it. We know. I mean, um, it's like denying your sister and your brother. It's a shame. You know, so. It's a crying shame. Because, a matter of fact, I do a show on Omni, and I've been filming for it. It's um, called Island Tea with Althea. Yes, you guys. You guys are pretty quiet tonight. Um, can you tell me who's out there? We have uh, Dora checked in. Uh, Cynthia's checked in, says hello. Hello. Who else we have? Um, I am Rico B. Hi, Rico. Dre Gordon. Dr uh, uh, I <laughs> you can't see that one there. Idro, hi Idro, how you doing? All right, we have Pam. Hi Pam. And Gavin. How is Jamaica? Hi Gavin. Daniel. Hi Daniel. Miranda. Hi Miranda. Patricia. Hi Patricia. Hi Adora. Hi Cynthia. Hi Christopher. Hi Simone. Hi everybody. There you go. Thank you for joining in. I appreciate it. Um, it's funny. We don't seem. We're ashamed of ourselves. Oh, yeah. We are. And the reason why I figure that we're ashamed of ourselves is because, and that's why I'm saying we don't love each other as our as a black people. We don't. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say they do, but they don't. But they don't. They don't. Yeah. And the reason why I said that, even me, it took me a long time in my life to actually come out with nappy head. With a, uh, this is what we're calling. We're gonna call it nappy. It's okay. I'm good. I'm good with it. Because even though it's nappy, I feel like I'm lit tonight. This is a great topic. You understand? To is your hair. My hair. So it's a it's the same thing when people come up with a conversation that you're going a little bit whatever. It's it's life. Okay. So we embrace and we try to fix it to the best that possible that we can. But I was born in Jamaica. I came here as a very young girl. So I get a chance to do a patois show. Mm -hmm. So it's a Caribbean show, you know, with Jamaicans, whatever not. So now they say I have two minutes of English. That's it, right? Because. We don't have a platform with Patwa. We don't have anything up here mm -hmm. that says Patwa. Right. Which to us, we know Patwa is not really a language. It's not. What it is, it's a bunch of Africans. I shouldn't call us a bunch and make us sound like something different. <laughs> but it was Africans that was taken to Jamaica from different parts of Africa. So it was different dialects in Africa. Everybody spoke different. Well, and actually, too, uh Pigeon when they were doing slave trades. Well, that's what they call the show. The show is called Pigeon, uh -huh, but Patois okay. is not Pigeon. Patois, it's, it's, but it is derived from that in the East. It is yes. derived from that. But what it is, it's a bunch. It's a, yes. all of us from Africa with different dialects. Yes. And we, it's like we hit a pan, ping, pong. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we, that's how we were able to communicate because they took us from different parts. We couldn't talk to each that's other. Right. So we had to make up our own language, and that's where Patois comes from. But I find out here that Caribbean people that speak Patois, from me filming for my show, they don't want to talk it. When I try to have them speak the Patois, mm -hmm. it, it comes, well, you know, it's, it's been such a, such a long time since I talk it. So I can't have them talk, they won't talk it. But I have to show them that this show is about patwa. It's about your pigeon. It's about it's about your culture and our experience. Right. It's not about English. It's not about Canadian. It is about the Caribbean. Yes. So for me to have somebody that comes from the Caribbean and don't want to share the language barrier, barrier tells me that somewhere in, inside of them they're a little bit ashamed of speaking the language. Well, you know, it's like. For instance, like my cousins, I have one cousin who will only speak pigeon. He just, you know, and my other cousin, she just refuses. She's just, she's very like Queen's English is, you know, to her that's proper. She just, she just won't. And you know, um, when they were when they were training the slaves and when they were, you know, when the white man was coming, they didn't know how to speak English. So that's how, you know, that's how pigeon kind of came about. They're broken English trying to, you know, and then, you know, once they shipped them off to the Caribbean, well, then they kind of elaborated on that because, yeah, they're all from different places. And so in Africa, you know, the universal language is pigeon, <laughs> yeah. you know, no matter where you come from. But people are always, I find that within our, our community, we're a little bit ashamed. 
whether you're from the Caribbean or whether you're from Africa, where there's a little bit of shame sometimes of certain aspects of your culture. So, but we need to let them know there's no reason to be ashamed. Well, it? there's no reason to be ashamed, but again, that's an individual thing. But it also depends on how you grew up, how you were raised. If your parents raised you to be, you know, proud of who you are. Like, somebody told me one time a long time ago, I should change my name. I was like, I'm not changing my name. <laughs> why, why in the world would I change my name? My name is Omotola. <laughs> and I'm happy and proud that I have that name. Why would I change my name for a resume? That is true. And but you're stronger. To, you're stronger today because some people would probably. Oh well, you know. I think I. That was my parents. I guess it's the way you treat your you, you teach yes. your children in yeah. their homes. Let's talk a little bit about um your you have a Don't not just Africa Day, but you guys are you're not doing it this year. You're doing something else. Yeah, we're doing a number of things this year. Um, so there's the film festival that we're doing that starts May 11th and runs till the 13th. I'm really excited about that. It's gotten a lot of buzz and uh, we've got some great, great films. And all the films have won plenty of awards from uh, Venice to Cannes to Toronto Film Festival to, um, oh geez, just uh, Sundance. So we've got a lot of films. And so I, I'm really excited because I, these films are not only to entertain, but enlighten and educate. Beautiful. So I, one of the films that uh, we're showcasing on Saturday, which is the, our last film of the event, is called White Shadow. And that is a very moving, moving piece. Can you tell us a little bit of what, um, what White Shadow is about? Yeah, White Shadow is about an albino growing up in Tanzania. So what it's like for albinos to grow up in, in certain parts of Africa and East Africa, and I'm really excited about that one because a lot of people really don't know. I mean, I remember, such a bad, but I remember the first time I ever saw an albino woman. I was uh, in Nigeria, I was little, and I was uh, in my aunt's house, and the way her house was is that the window was just above the stairs on the outside, and I saw this albino woman walking by. She was short, she was brown, and I remember I screamed. Because, <laughs> this is really bad, I thought it was a walking pig. I'd never seen anything like that before, and I was just a little kid, and, and it always stuck with me. And as I got older and really started to get educated about uh, albino, it, it always intrigued me. And I always thought about that day. If somebody had have told me and explained to me, to me what it was, what it was, it would have been easier. It's, been easier. it's funny because the Caribbean, which is Jamaican, the Jamaican people, I've heard several stories about albino. One of them is not too good. I hear that it's brothers and sisters yeah. made him, and that's how the albinos come. Yes, um, okay. I haven't heard that one. I've heard about period babies. I heard that that's part of it. So they, they no, they, it's, you know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And it's maybe it's, it's just ignorance. It's, it it's is. plain ignorance. It is ignorance. Yes. You know, they don't let people know that it's the melanin in the skin that is right. is, is um. You yes. understand? Yes. And they they say bad things about it, but a lot of us, just like me, didn't realize it was a melanin in somebody's skin. Why they would come out as white as they do? Yes. yes. Right. So again, it's education, right? It's education and it's it's a drama piece, but it's got a lot of truth to what happens to albinos. It's very scary, it's very sad, but again, it will enlighten you to, to kind of bring awareness of what's going on. And so like you were saying, you didn't hear good stories. No. On the flip side, in certain parts of Africa, they believe that they have magical powers. So they'll kill them for their parts. Their hearts are very, uh, um, they're too, I'm just see, their hearts are very, um, well, I'm trying to make it just uh, nice as they I They say can. they're sought after. Very. It's like our elephants and their white, they white husks organs. and ivory. It's yeah, the hearts are very sought after, and as well as other body parts. And, you know, they bring them to these medicine men who, and you know, they sell them on the black market. And so, you know, and that's what puts them in danger. I mean, they already are in danger living in Africa and having to be under the sun. That's deathly as yeah, it is. It's bad for them. It's bad for them. But to have to be scared to walk around, mothers have to hide their children, you know, not let people know that they have them because, you know, they're killed just for just for the stupid ignorance that... It uh, is ignorance. And if you yeah. really, really um, uh, medically check it out, yes. you'll realize if the eye, when the eyes come blue or green, it's just a lacking yes. of the melon in the eyes. Yes. It's not that God loved you more than me and gave me yeah. green eyes and blue eyes. <laughs> it's just a lack of melon yeah. in your skin. To, let's talk a little bit more about your um, the, the, the show then, because so, I would like to see that. Where is that showing? That's at the Globe Cinema. So that will be on the 13th. That will be on Saturday at 7 o'clock. 
And then Saturday as well, at four o'clock, we're gonna have Shango. Shango is like the Yoruba deity of like lightning and thunder, and he is like the god of all of the um, natural causes kind of stuff on this earth. Oh wow, and that sounds amazing. It is amazing, it's an old film, but it's a classic. And um, had a chance of um, you know talking with the director of the film that made it, and he sent it, to, and uh, so we're going to showcase that one, and and, I, and that one will be very good, good because a lot of people in South America mm -hmm. are really into Shango, Caribbean, really into Shango, and of course Africa. So you'll kind of get to see how he was a legendary king and how he turned into this roaring god. And right now, I, I realize that African music beat is becoming it's like, so popular. And now they start yeah. wearing the um, the African tops and the bottom. Yes. It's like the fashion is becoming huge. It's, you know, you and know, the, head, the head wrap that you're doing right now, too, is part of the fashion. It's becoming really huge. Yeah. This is my, I don't feel like messing with my hair. <laughs> but again, <laughs> today, but, I, but yeah, you know, I'm an African girl, so I... You know, I'm gonna rock it, but it is. It's so it's so popular now for everybody to to uh, do this. But I've been wrapping my hair for years, and so it's just kind of funny but to see. Everybody thinks wrapping is something that's new. It's not. It's not. It's an African tradition. It's a Black people can, uh, yes. tradition. Yes. When they wanted to be pretty instead of makeup, it was a wrap. The wrap was yeah. our tradition thing, right? You do and a lot queen. of people, yeah, that we were queens, and a lot of people don't realize that. Actually, they think it's a new fashion that just came back in. Yeah. But that's Back in the days, from slavery, this is how they wrapped themselves. Yeah. They just, it was a beauty thing. Yes. So, um, yeah, you know, I, uh, I'm, I, I'm really excited about it, and I think, uh, I think that everybody will enjoy it, no matter where you're from. So, can we tell people where to come to find, to come down and see the, the African film? Yeah. So it starts on Thursday, which is the 11th. So come to the Globe Cinema. The first show starts at seven o'clock. We're going to be featuring the Wedding Party, which is a Nigerian film. It's a comedy film, um, and it's done really well, and it's, it's quite funny, so we're gonna show that one. And then um, Friday, we're gonna show uh, Shango, and then Saturday, we're gonna show uh, at four o'clock, I think I said Shango at four o'clock on Saturday, but that's not true, it's Friday at seven. And then we're gonna show a film called Tana. Now, that's a South Pacific film, and that one is, the cinematography in that film is beautiful, and it's based on a true story, and I really, really, suggest checking that film out. So we're gonna take a second here and see, I see a couple little, um, got some comments, comments now. Yes. out there, so let's I get saw, into them. I saw Faith, yes. Say hi Faith. hi Faith, hi Faith, how are you? So first we have Cynthia responding to an earlier conversation that I was, yes, we get it all the time. You don't, African, yes, people, Africans look so, you guys look good as well, you're saying, but yes. again, with the not speaking your language at home and, and saying it's not the right place or time to speak your language, um, we have a uh, clothing and makeup sponsorship going on in there. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Faith joins us and she says she loves the new set that we chose this afternoon, this evening. Thank you. We have Alicia who's joined us. Put up some links for the movies that are being shown. Trevor Hi Trevor, and, how are you doing? Kingsley has joined us. Hi Kingsley, how you doing? Um, Faith wants to know are all the movies going to be yes. played in English? They are all, uh, there's English subtitles. So they're all English subtitles, which is fantastic. No, yes. Misty who's just joined us. Yes. Hi um, Misty, how you doing? Yeah, because they're from around the world, you know, so they're, uh, they're, uh, they're we always make sure that we have English subtitles. But you won't, I mean, I know some people don't like to read English subtitles, but the films are so fantastic, you won't even notice. <laughs> they won't even notice today. Really notice. Do we have anything else that we can announce? And um... Well, so there's going to be a few things coming up. There's going to be, we are planning, we're going to be having some intimate concerts. Um, I have kind of in the process of trying to pick. <laughs> I have got like probably about 150 emails from people all over the world that want us to, you know, they want to come and perform. So I'm trying to decide, uh, you know, just kind of pick the best uh, performance that I think that will do really well this fall. We're also going to be having a number of programs in the Calgary Board of Education, so we're going to be posting that in a few months to come. So we've got a lot of programs coming up in the Calgary Board of Education. I'm really excited about that. So what can we do to implement all the urban community into that? Well, you know, I think one of the things that's really, really important is, uh, you know, uh, and I hate kind of saying cross-cultural exchange because but we've made it like we're, we're different cultures when really we're not. But, 
yeah, I think, you know, we need to go to all the different organizations, each of us, all of us, and talk and, you know, take part in all of the different organizations that are that uh, that are there. And, um, you know, just exchange, exchange what's uh, going on, talk about different things that are happening. Or Have your tea out. before it gets cold, honey, because oh, it's chilly in here today. I don't know why chilly. Sorry for cutting you. Mm. Continue and finish me hard. No, just... so I think that that's something that's really important, you know, is to um, not only just attend each other's events, but I think it's important to, um, you know, go to the different uh, community organizations. Here, Miss Jess, can we give them a little um, blare on, we're going to talk about these two people, um, the one with the dress, and um, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a stand up for a minute, I'm going to turn around, I'd like to give, um, all right, uh, Ranjan Kimar, Kumar Nandi, uh, bookkeeping, payroll, GST, uh, and income tax. And he does my tax. You got to put him in there. He does my tax for the last 11 years. He's fantastic. If you guys need to get your business income tax done, he is the man to go look for. Ramsey is the man to look for. So we're going to put him in the live, you guys, to see if you guys need any kind of tax. Because we're April, we're just, we're right around there. We got a little bit of time left, but you guys are right there. So if you need somebody to do your tax, Please give him a call. We're going to put his number on live. All right, and clothing by uh, A. La Parisi, per per Parisiani, uh, at Memorial Drive, dressing out the... Uh, so he's family. dressed me every week, weekly. Can we, uh, you want to hold that so I can stand up so everybody can take a look? Not at my boobs, but at his dress. <laughs> beautiful. So every week, or every time I come up, he gives me something beautiful. You guys need to check him out. He's in Marlboro Mall. We're also going to put that up for you guys to um, see. You can go down and see him. The, um, he has all kind of good looking stuff. Looking fabulous. Faith says, are you prepared to work with others? Um, I've always been prepared to. I've always, you know, whenever I get a call and if I can make it, I always go. I'm not... Uh, I've, you know, this is something that's kind of been on my, that I've had a conversation with with people for years. So I'm always prepared to work with somebody. So yes, Faith, I'm, <laughs> but you, uh, you already know that, but yes, I'm always prepared to work with um, other people. I think that it's important, even though sometimes it can be hard because, um, you know, you may know that maybe that person's not really willing to work um, with you or you may not have the same like-mindedness as you, but yeah, I'm always willing. Thank you. I didn't hear what you said, but it probably was fantastic. <laughs> I was responding to and the, Hi, Sonia. How are you doing? Thanks for joining in. Um, I want to, I just got something in my hand, and the person just passed it to me when I got up, and they told me, one race, there's only one race. The human race. And it's the human race. <laughs> and yeah. they really want us to elaborate on it. So we're going to elaborate on it right now because it's time for us to come together as one. We're not separate. We are people of one race, one color, one blood, one everything. So do you want to elaborate on that a little bit and then we can talk a little bit and... Well, you know, that's something that I've said for a long time. We really, we're, we're, we are one race, but we've divided ourselves. And, um, you know, it's just a, a matter of um, how you treat, how do you want to be treated? So how are you going to treat other people? And how do you come together, you know, as uh, as one race? I believe sometimes some people make that difficult for you. Oh, of course, yeah. So, if you're saying it's how you want to be treated, I think I think majority of human race want to be treated with respect and treated nice. They do. But sometimes, <laughs> but you know, I'm just saying it. it it's how we want to be treated. I don't believe that's true. Well, I think um, we all think about how we, we all think about how we want to be treated and we all want to be treated with respect, but we all don't give respect. And we all don't, we all don't give respect. And we all don't get respect all the time. What if you're given respect and you're not getting respect? I mean, what, the reason why- You have to make that person respect you, no matter, you know what I mean? Even when they don't want to, there's nothing, you know, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about that. So I don't, I don't. Sad, but. You can change yourself. I have a gentleman here. He has so much to say, but he chooses not to come on here and say it. And as we're talking. You can talk behind camera. You can talk behind, talk behind camera. camera. Say your points. 
Um, we have Fred here. Fred is behind the camera. So Fred, say what you just had on your mind. The camera will still pick it up. Go ahead. You can't change people. You can only change yourself. Yes. And it starts within you. If you make the change in yourself, people will eventually see you and follow on. Yeah. One stone cannot move a current, but all together, you'll stop it. So, I think everybody's heard that, and I think that sounds fantastic. I, sounds great There's on nothing paper. more you can do besides be the change. So, yourself. Yeah. You know what, you guys? I said it was Fred, but that wasn't Fred. <laughs> and the reason why I lied is because Fred didn't want me to say who he was. But I'm going to tell you who that was. And then I wanted to say it again. But before who I tell you that, I wanted to say it again. Say exactly what you just said. One person can't make the change. Like a stone in the water, it will move from the current. But if, as all the stones together, it can stop the flow. You can only change who you are as an individual, no one else. But you make the change. Mm -hmm. Be better, and people will follow. Absolutely. You're not going to change the world, but you will change someone. And one by one, I that's wish, how you change. I wish, I wish Fred would come over here and sit with me. <laughs> um, that is not Fred, by the way, you guys. That is my son. That is Christopher speaking to you guys. And he was raised with love, respect, and understanding. And that's why he was able to speak that clearly and that respectfully. So on that note, I'm going to take the credit for that because I am the one <laughs> that raised him. Thank you, Christopher, for your comment. Um, do we have any more questions out there, you guys? We're, we're waiting. No questions so far. We have lots of people sitting there uh, chiming in. Uh, we have a couple more visitors. Sonia, again. Uh, Keisha joined us. Um, oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> I can't pronounce that one. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, Bong Music uh, Uda, joined Uda. us. Uda Uda, hi Uda Uda, how you doing? Timron joined us as well. How you doing? All right. I better not say that. I might get sued for that word. How you doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we never said it. We never. Said we it. never said it. We don't say things like that. We said hey. Hi, Nicole. How you doing? You guys, Nicole Webster is Nicole Webster. That does my face, but tonight it was done by Cynthia. Looking great. Thank you, Faith. Thanks, Faith. Hi. Hello, Nicole. Nicole is saying hello. Hello. Oh, I see you now. Hi. <laughs> um, do we have any other um, things that are coming up? <clears throat> well, I mean, I know... Go ahead, I'll oh, let no, you talk. Ahead, I'll let you talk first. Oh no, I was just saying, uh, I, you know, first I would say is to come and check out the film. You know, CTV got involved. We also partnered with Calgary Film Festival. Um, you know, they were really excited about the films that we were showing. And um, and so I would, you know, I, especially for the community because these films are just, they're really good. And they, they you know, they just help bridge the gap. It does, and it's putting us on another. It's putting us on another level and yeah. another plateau. Yeah. And I think we need those things, we right? We need those things. We, need lots. we have all these other festivals that show films and stuff like that, but we don't have anything for ourselves and anything to showcase the talent that we have. And uh, when and we've, we've got a, a girl who's going to. Um, she's going to talk about that. Uh, she's going to make some posting about that. She's got a little short film that she's going to have on uh, Saturday before the showing of the last film. And you know what I wanted to, I wanted to touch a little bit on, on, on a, a, a lady that has been, uh, been really um, supportive to me. Um, there's two women that's been really supportive. I shouldn't just say a woman. Mm -hmm. There's been a, two women that's been really supportive to me. And I want to touch on, I want to touch on it. Actually, there's more than two. Oh my God, there's three. As I look, I just want to start out with Adora. Mm -hmm. I believe that Adora is doing a lot in the community, which, and it's my opinion. And I think that she deserves more recognition from the community mm -hmm. than what I believe she gets. And I just want everybody to shout out and, and give Adora a little bit more of what she deserves. Mm -hmm. you know. And that's just, just, just from my opinion. Uh, I think Adora is doing, uh, doing, she's opening a lot of doors. She's gone into places that a lot of us hasn't gone in, and we have to keep elevating her. Another person that I want to give a look, I give a, a great amount of um, respect to, because they've been supporting me a great amount of time, and that is Fate Greaves, mm -hmm. and she's running for council in the community, yeah, she is. and that is very important for us as urban yeah. people. Because we that, don't have anybody, I think. Uh, I don't think we've had anybody really that's been. Uh, Kind of our one race race council. Nice, uh, know that we can unify as a culture. 
Well, yeah. yeah, that is, you know what, please come and say that for me. Please come and say it. They, it don't, they can hear us, they can hear us. Yeah. Okay, say it again, say it again. It's good to know that we're one race, like I said, but as black people, it is nice to know that we have, what was I said? Unified. That we, yes, that we can unify and that we have people to look up to. Yeah. Mentors. Yeah. mentors. We need mentors. Right. And that's why I'm saying Faith Greaves is yeah. a huge mentor. But we can't get her into power by just saying it's a good thing that she's doing it. People has got to get up and vote for her. Mm -hmm. yeah. People has got to get up and talk about her. People has got to get up and know that Faith is doing something great and talk well, about, about it. Her you got to talk mm -hmm. about the, her community. I'm talking about her community. Because the other community from outside is going to come in and help. I know that. Right. They are. Faith knows a lot of people and faith pulls a lot of people and she helps a lot of people so i think we need to really help her to get to that next level mm -hmm. so that we have a mentor in our community yeah. you know not i mean not just being black but it's important that we have somebody standing up for us mm -hmm. okay and faith is taking that opportunity so i want us to fight and help her um fight for her um Faith says you are awesome and thank you. You're very, very welcome. There's another young lady that I... Hi, Jackie. How are you doing? Thanks for coming in. Um, there's another There's another woman. Like, I want to give thanks to women. I want to give thanks to to all kind of women right now that are out there that doing that doing much. I want to start off by saying thank all my audience and everybody that supports me out there. Yeah. Um, thanks for the support, because if it's not for the support, I wouldn't have the platform and I wouldn't still be here today. Yeah. Um, again, I, hi Jack, how are you doing? So I want to thank everybody first and most, but for all the individual that is making a difference in the community and in the world that's doing positivity, yeah. I, want a, I want to make a shout out to them, no matter what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I've just seen a lot of people doing a lot of things and they're not getting yeah. They're not getting the, the shout out that they need and that they, they, they should get it. Mm -hmm. I'm thanking all the makeup artists that comes on the show that makes, that lights me up, you know, yeah. lit. Hi, get the lit. Um, I want to- Cynthia did your makeup today? Cynthia did she my did makeup today and she did a fantastic job and I want to shout out to her and I want anybody in the community today that needs any kind of assistance from her to call her, her number is in the live and she's there. Help her out. Um, Nicole Webster is another person that yes. does my, my face. You know, she does it for my island tea, she does it for Sunday tea. I want you guys to call her out and help her out at the same time. She can put over her information. Um, I have a clothing store um, that uh, Jessica has put in the line for me, Jessica. And we want to call them out. But thank you very much for every time I come out, you guys light me up. I want to give God thanks for my family and my children, my husband. Um, there's so many people and so many things out there, and sometimes I get down on myself. You know, I, I think that this isn't right and this is not good. But at the end of the day, when I wake up in the morning, that's a blessing from God. And yes. every time I walk, I have my store today. I might not be filthy rich, but I still have my store and it's over my head. I want to thank God. There's so many people out there that I want to thank. I want to share positivity. I want to stay positive. And on that note, that's all we can do. Yeah. I appreciate you guys watching me every day. I enjoy my son talking to me. He's raised so well, and he has <laughs> such good opinion, but he doesn't want to come on the show because he's in his pajama. Why we come in with PJ, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, you guys, I thank you. I thank you, thank you very much. Do you have an email, an um, website, anything that they can follow you? Because we're about to close the show up. So okay. you give them your information, and I give them the rest. I'm on Facebook as Tola D. I am also, there's also the Africa Day website on Facebook, and for the film festival, you can check out the Facebook, um, Africa Day Facebook page. You can also go to Africa Day uh, slash African uh, Film Festival. Um, what else? And I think that's really about it. I have other ones, but they're not really nice. So I'm, I'm, and I'm going to invite you on my island tea with Althea. I'm going to speak Patois, even if you don't know what I'm saying, just nod. I'm Niger, come on. Say, yeah, Minoa, Minoa, man, Minoa, Minoa. Hi, Nicole McDartin. Thank you for joining in. It's a pleasure to have you guys. Every day I have somebody new coming on my life. Every day, every day somebody new is coming on my life, and that is fantastic. That was my app for a minute. No, it's not. Um, cost for tickets. So $10 for individual tickets. I think it's $35 for a family of, for a group. 
and I think it's 10% off if you do a family of four. So, yes. And all of that information is on not only the Facebook page, but the Africa Day slash Film Festival page. All of that information is on there as well. So what about for the host? You can always get a ticket. Okay. Come Thanks. see the films. They're going to be great. I will. I definitely will. Um, and I want, can I say thank you to the um, to CTV for sponsoring us and also to the Calgary Film Festival for partnering with us. That is fantastic. We have great things going on in the community. Yes. I'm so excited. You guys, on the 28th of May, no, the 21st of May, I will be in Edmonton um, with Maka Diamond. I'm doing an interview with her. She has a new song out, so we're going to talk about the song. On the 28th, we have Andrew. He's running for mayor. We have him here on Sunday Tea. Sunday Tea. Remember, Sunday Tea Lit. We have him here on the 28th. Who else do we have? Um, God, we'll take anybody who wants to come. No, I'm just kidding. We won't take anybody. Another announcement, you guys. I did a pilot um, last Tuesday, the 2nd of May, and it was for a cooking show. What it is is I go around to fancy restaurant and I announce their food. I talk about their food. I talk about their restaurant. I talk about how lit the food is. I talk about how good things are. And I got the show. So look out for that. That will be coming with Island Tea, you guys. And I will try to get everybody involved in everything that I'm doing as much as I can. This is a team thing. It's just not an Althea thing. It's a team thing. You guys can follow me on YouTube. You guys can follow me on Facebook. You guys can follow me on Twitter. You guys can follow me all over. I'm not stopping. I'm everywhere. Anywhere you want to be, that's where I'll be. I'm going to be there. I'm not leaving. And one more thing. Mr. Odin Powell, I love you. No matter what the situation or what the circumstance or what's going on in this world, I love you to pieces, my husband. Have yourself a fantastic evening. I'm going to come home to revel you. Jesus. TMI. Turn music on and go out with you guys. TM nothing. I'm going to go home and T-A-B him. <laughs> Hello. Get on up. Let me show you what I got. I'm going to shake this right out. You got me? I got music. It. I'm going to come up nice and slow, and this is what I do on a Sunday tea. Have a great night, you guys. Thank you very much for joining us, sweetheart. Oh, you're quite welcome. Night, night, you guys. Stay blessed, every last one of you.